Hey everybody, so I'd like to tell you a sequel to Happy's Oasis called Prudence's Plight. Um, so if you haven't seen Happy's Oasis yet, please watch, give that a watch and then watch this one. So this is the story of Prudence's Plight. So one fine fall day, there was a jubilee of the convalescing taking place at Happy's Oasis, or as Happy called it, an a jubilee. And everyone was there. Everyone, that is, except for Prudence. Prudence was still far, far away, way down in Africa, in the Aturi rainforest, along the Aturi River, in a clearing, sitting next to a banana tree. Now, the reason Prudence was there was because she was perplexed about how to bring all her really important luggage with her to Happy's Oasis, because she could not imagine going to Happy's Oasis without these things. And I have to tell you that Wynne took one look at Prudence's luggage and thought, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Because Prudence had packed a very heavy pallet of perfection. Because, you know, you can never really have too much perfection. But she also had packed a very weighty crate of control it all. Because, well, it's good to have a little extra control, don't you think? And just in case that wasn't quite enough, uh, Prudence had also packed a whole box of expectation because she didn't know what kind of expectation she would need for Happy's Oasis. She'd never been there before. And just in case any of that wasn't quite going to do the trick, she also had a very heavy, lumpy bag of what if. Now, I should probably also tell you that Prudence didn't really like her name. But no one called her by her name. Not even her mama. Why, everybody, everybody called her Hofu. And Hofu in Swahili means afraid. Now, Prudence, or Hofu, didn't particularly like that name either. But she did have to admit she was very afraid. She was afraid of the nighttime and the daytime. And she was afraid of the past and the future. She was afraid of missing out. And she was afraid of being overwhelmed. Prudence couldn't think of anything that she wasn't afraid of. So Hofu would do. Because Hofu was what everyone called her. Now... Wind was in the clearing, and his knees were knocking at the sight of this pile of stuff that Hofu wanted to bring with her. But there was really no way for Wind to tell her that she didn't need these things, that everything she could need to get well and be whole was already there at Happy's Oasis. And, but no matter what he did or how he tried to explain it, Hofu just couldn't understand what Wind was saying. Now, Wind thought, well, okay, so she can't understand me, but if I can just get her to touch my fur, then she'll leap onto my back and I can take her there. But Hofu knew this too, because though Hofu was afraid, she was not dumb. And so Wind kept trying to inch a little closer to Hofu, and Hofu kept inching away from Wind, and it kind of became this funny dance there in the clearing, and some of the animals began to gather around. At first they were curious, and they were wondering, well, what is going on down there? But then some of them were a little sassy and snarky, and well, they weren't, some of them even weren't very nice, and they made fun of Hofu, and well, it wasn't going very well at all. And in fact, now it looked like storm clouds were gathering, and this was no good. Soon, one of the families of animals that came near the clearing was this troop of gorillas. And the silverback who led the troop was with them too, and he was a very good and wise leader. And his name is Ukweli, and Ukweli in Swahili means truth. Now, Ukweli took one look at what was happening down in the clearing and thought, now, this is really no good. We have to do something. And so he also went down to the clearing because he thought maybe he could explain to Hofu that these things that she had packed, well, they wouldn't make Happy's Oasis 
um, any better at all. They wouldn't make the entertainment more enchanting. They wouldn't make the food more delightful. They wouldn't make the company more comforting. And they wouldn't make the love more loving. No, in fact, these things, if they would do anything at all, they would diminish the experience a bit. But as it so often happens, when we first see truth coming towards us, especially deep, powerful truths in our lives, the sight of Ukwele, well, you can imagine, Hofu was terrified. Well, that wasn't going to work either. So Ukwele thought, I need reinforcements. And so he went off into the jungle to get help. And the animals just kind of sat back and watched Hofu and Wen struggle. They watched that, that is, until Ukwele came back through the jungle. And the sky had grown very dark. But they saw who Ukwele had with him, and they thought, oh, Ukwele, he always knows just who to get. And who he had with him was Hope. Now, Hope was not just the matriarch of her little family of elephants. No, she was the matriarch of all the families of all the elephants because she was the goodest and the wisest of them all. And Hope took one look at what was going on in the clearing and she knew just what to do. Well, she went straight up to Hofu and she nodded very purposefully. And then she went over to that pet, that heavy pallet of perfection and she put one tusk under it and she put a trunk around it and she pushed it against a banana tree in the clearing and she heaved and she struggled and she got a leg underneath it and after a long struggle, she was able to get it balanced up on her head. And Hofu was so happy. She was relieved. She clapped. She was like, oh, this is going to work. This is going to work. But then Hofu realized that now that Hope was so precariously balancing the entire pallet of perfection on her head. She had no way to help Hofu onto her back. Heartbroken, Hofu nodded and Hope understood and she put the pallet of perfection down with quite a loud thump, I might add. Hofu wasn't willing to give up yet, though, and honestly, neither was Hope. So they went next to the crate of control at all and you would think it only being a crate not a pallet it would be better but it wasn't it wasn't one bit better it was as bad or even worse and it was so awkward and it was so hard hope trumpeted with the effort of trying to get it up on her head and once again as soon as she had it on her head there was no way to get hofu on her back well you can imagine hofu's reaction to this she was terrified she wasn't going to be able to take this either. But Hope put it down and they went over next to the box of expectation. Once again, it was so difficult to, for Hope to lift onto her head. And again, there was no way for Hofu to get onto Hope's back. And so it was the same with the bag of what if. And Hofu was just heartbroken. She was devastated. And she hung her head. And she started to cry. And just then the storm clouds broke loose. And it was just as well. Because Hofu didn't want Hope or any of the other animals to see her crying. And most of them felt very bad for Hofu now. And Hope stood a little closer to Hofu, and she spread her ears out so Hofu could at least have some shelter to stand in. And, and Hofu leaned in, and she could smell on, on Hope's skin the fields that she walked through and the grasses, and they were all in bloom that time of year, and it was so beautiful. And, and Hofu leaned in a little closer, and, and she could feel... Hope's rough skin with her face. And she felt that it felt warm. And Hope put her trunk around Hofu and held her and hugged her. And, and Hofu could feel Hope's good heart beating strong. 
and truthfully. And just then, Hope thought, maybe I could. And so she very carefully began to lift and put Hofu on her back. And Hofu didn't notice it at first, but soon she realized she was on Hope's back. And well, it, everything looked so different. Those things underneath the banana tree, the palette of perfection, the crate, all of it, it looked so insignificant. And, and what a view she had. Well, she didn't even mind the rain. The rain even felt glorious somehow. And Hope felt Hofu's encouragement and, and with that sense was able to lift one foot and they stepped right over the Ituri River. And Hope's heart swelled as she realized Hofu was beginning to feel encouraged and she was able to lift another leg and she stepped all the way from the bank of the Ituri to the edge of the Ituri rainforest. And in this way, Hope and Hofu were able to help each other take one step after another and soon they were right there in front of the huge tent on Happy's Oasis. And everyone heard Hope coming because Hope at this point was so overjoyed. She was, she was trumpeting with joy and, and Hofu was clapping and shouting when she never felt so free. And, and everyone came up and they thought, well, it, it looks like Hofu. Is, is that not Hofu? And, and, and then they began to think, no, it's something happened on her way here. She's, she's different now. And from that day forward, none of the animals ever called Hope Hofu again, or called called Prudence Hofu again. Why? Why none? No one called Prudence Hofu again. No, from that day forward, everyone called Hofu Imani. In Imani in Swahili, means faith. Thank you.